All right. Today's date's the 13th, and we have what's referred to as asymptotes and holes. Right. So we're moving into graphing uh, rational functions. All right. So we have, we'll go through this to find vertical asymptotes. These occur where the function is undefined. Okay, so vertical asymptotes occur where the function is undefined. Right. So if I write up here as an example, f of x is equal to 8x over x minus 3. And I ask you, where is this function defined? You write it down. Right. So it's the same as the domain, right? So if I take this denominator, and this one's straightforward, but let's just pretend the denominator is not straightforward. You take x minus 3, set it equal to 0, solve for x, x equals 3. So that means I have a vertical asymptote at x equals 3. Right. So like I said, show the work just so you remember that if it's complicated, just set it equal to 0 and solve for x. Right. Now this one, the horizontal asymptotes, uh, there are three conditions. All right. But to do horizontal asymptotes, you have to set the problem up. And the easiest way to do this is you should have, have just one fraction. And only evaluate the leading terms on top and bottom of the function. Or top and bottom. Yeah, it's a function on top. Okay, so <clears throat> I'll show you an example. But if they have multiple fractions for our problem, you have to get a common denominator, add the two of them together, so you just have one fraction. That's really important. So you have to have just one fraction, right? And then all we're going to look at is the leading term. Oh, that's leading right there. The, it looks like, that's fine. The leading term, right? So the, the highest degree term on top and the highest degree term on bottom. You can disregard the rest of the problem when you evaluate horizontal asymptotes, okay? So, the other thing you have to do is, after you set this up, you have to reduce the fraction. You'll create a singular fraction. If you don't reduce the fraction, these rules fall apart. But they're fail-proof if you follow these rules. Right? So I try to make this as simple as possible. Uh, make sure you try to uh, have one fraction and reduce the fraction. All right. So here are three conditions. All right. So I'm going to write up here if, and then we'll set this. Here's the first condition. If your function f of x, after you reduce, you have some number on top over any kind of variable on the bottom. Okay, Doesn't matter what number it is, just a number. And then on the bottom, any type of variable, the horizontal asymptote will be y equals 0. So I'll write up here, I, oh, I don't know. Sure, I'll do IE. So say f of x is equal to 4x plus, it doesn't matter what comes after, over, let's go with x to the third plus whatever. So to evaluate the horizontal asymptote, I will just look at the leading terms on top and bottom. So I'm just going to look at f of x equals 4x over x to the third. And you have to reduce. Okay. So if I reduce, the x is reduced. So I'm looking at f of x. All my notes are going to be terrible. 4 over x squared. So if I have a number on top, which I do, I have a 4 on top, and I have a variable, doesn't matter what type of variable, but some variable on the bottom, I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. All right. And we can go into the explanation later. Uh, but for now, let's just get this down. So that's the first condition. If it's the other way around, so we have our second condition, f of x equals, now it's the opposite. We have some variable over a number. 
Okay, if it's the other way around, right? Then, There is no horizontal asymptote, okay, so there is then none, or n no horizontal asymptote, or sometimes they refer to it as going to plus and minus infinity, right? So there is just none, though. That's the basic, the simplest way to think of it, right? So if it's the other way around, it shoots off into space, and, there's, and the, graph, the graph shoots off into space, and there's no horizontal asymptote, right? And the third condition is if you have f of x equals, and you just end up with a number, Right? The variable terms cancel out. The variable terms cancel out, and you're left with just some number. If that's the case, then y equals whatever that number happens to be. Right? So then you have a horizontal asymptote. So two of them, you create y equals 0 or some number. And then this one here, there is no horizontal asymptote. All right, two more to go. Two more to go, unless somebody's got something they want to yell. Or ask. Okay, so we have vertical asymptotes, horizontal asymptotes, and we also now have what's referred to as slant asymptotes. Okay. Now these are very specific. These only occur when the numerator, that's the top, Right? The numerator is the top of the fraction, right? is one degree higher than the denominator. Okay? So slant asymptotes only occur if the numerator is one degree higher then is the denominator, a difference of one. If it's like a x to the 5 on top, it has to be x to the 4 on the bottom, right? It has to be a literal one difference. If not, then, then there's none. To figure the slant asymptote out, you have to long divide, okay? So you must long divide, and we'll do an example in one second, okay? And I'm going to write slant asymptote, S-A, slant asymptote is the whole number portion of the quotient. Okay. So you have to long divide and it's the whole number portion of the quotient. So if there's a remainder, you can just disregard the remainder. Right? We don't need it for the slant asymptote. So let's look at this example. This one does have a slant asymptote. All right, so we have f of x equals x squared minus 4x plus 1 divided by x minus 2. So this does have a slant asymptote. Oh, wait a second. Okay, it does have a slant because the highest degree on top is a 2. The highest degree on the bottom is a 1, so we have a difference of 1. So when you long divide, the x minus 2 goes on the outside, and you have x squared minus 4x plus 1. It's a good idea to also have it descending and in sequence in here. It does help. Not necessary, though. All right? But it's helpful uh, to put in standard mode. High degree to low degree, but it's not necessary. But like I always do. And now all you do is you ask yourself, you focus on the first term here and the first term on the inside. Ask yourself, what do you multiply this x by so it becomes x squared? Right? So in your head, hopefully you said x. And you want to line up all your like terms, so you just write your answer up here, x. Right? Now you take this x on the outside, and you multiply it to the outside x minus 2 and write your answer below. Go ahead. Take the x, multiply it to x minus 2, and write your answer below. So x times x is x squared. x times negative 2 is negative 2x. Two right? Now, if you remember, when you divide, you have to change the signs. And then you just add. So the x squareds cancel out. So your goal is always cancel out the leading term, right? The x squared is the leading term. It cancels out. This becomes negative 2x. Then you drop the next term down. 
Now you ask yourself, what do you multiply this x by to get negative 2x, right? And then you write your answer up here. So what do you multiply this x by to get negative 2x? And you write your answer up at the top. So hopefully you say, well, negative 2. Now you take negative 2, you multiply it to the outside, and you write your answer below. Right? It's a nice big circular thing. So take this negative 2, multiply it to x minus 2, and then write your answer below. So here you get negative 2x, then this is plus 4, right? but then you have to change the signs, so this becomes a plus, and this becomes minus, then you add, you have a negative 3, there's nothing else to drop, so that is your remainder, negative 3 over x minus 2. Now I said, if you go up here, the slant asymptote is the whole number portion. So your whole number is just the x minus 2. So you have a slant asymptote at y equals x minus 2. This is your slant asymptote. And if you think about the word asymptote, an asymptote is a line. So that creates a line that the graph will drift towards the further you go out towards space. All right, All right one more thing. This one's not nearly as irritating. All right, we have holes in the graph. Last thing and I'm done. Hang in there. Okay. Now holes occur where the function is undefined and that term cancels out. So holes occur where the function is undefined and that term cancels out. Now holes appear to be like vertical asymptotes because that's exactly what the definition of a vertical asymptote is, is where is the function undefined, right? So let me show you this example. So let's say f of x is equal to x minus 3 over x squared minus x minus 6. So go ahead and establish the domain for me. So if, if you just take the bottom and set that equal to 0, I'm looking at x squared minus x minus 6 equals 0. And this factor is x minus 3. Uh, x plus 2 equals 0. Uh, and then I know the domain is x equals 3 and negative 2. So I'm just going to write this up here, x minus 3. And then this factor is x minus 3, x plus 2. So I know that it's undefined here. Now, we talked about at the very beginning vertical asymptotes occur where the function's undefined, essentially the domain. But if you notice right here, this x minus 3's cancel out. Right? So the x minus 3, this one, is a whole at x equals 3. So it loses its vertical asymptote behavior and becomes a whole. This one, I'm left with 1 over x plus 2. The, there's a vertical asymptote only at x equals negative 2. Right? So if a term cancels out, it loses its vertical asymptote property, and it just becomes a whole. Right? And then you only have one vertical asymptote at negative 2. Right? So I don't know what this graph looks like, but let's just do this. So I know that I have a vertical asymptote at negative 2. Right? And this graph should look something like this. To address the hole, it says there's a hole at x equals 3. So I'll go out, let me go out a little bit further. There's x equals 3. You would put a hole right there. So it would be a hollow hole to represent that it is undefined at that moment in time. So don't include that point in your answers. All right, that was a lot of stuff. Tons. Any, any words at this moment? Yeah. Okay, let me, let me make up another problem. Uh, where's my text? Long division.
So this is something I thought I didn't know if you guys knew long division yet, but you guys don't. I'm assuming, or is that, or you just forgot? No, never. 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 Okay. See, these are things I have to change in my notes for next year. So, all right, I will take that into consideration. So here, let's just do a long division problem together. It's once you, once your brain wraps around it, you'll be okay. So I'll give you something like, uh, let's put x plus five on the outside, and let's put. 3x squared plus 7x minus 20. The goal is to cancel out the leading term each time. Right? So you ask yourself, what do you multiply this leading term to cancel out this leading term? You don't care about collateral damage. right? You're just trying to get the leading term to cancel out. The rest of it just comes along for the ride. So give it a go, and I'll help you in a moment. All right, so I asked myself, what do I multiply this x by to get 3x squared? And hopefully your answer was 3x. So you write your answer up here. Like, like I said, I like to line up my like terms. 3x times x is 3x squared. Then 3x times 5 is plus 15x. Right? Now when you divide, you always subtract out the terms. So the x squareds cancel, and now I'm left with negative 8x. And I drop down the negative 20. And I asked myself, what do I multiply this x by to get negative 8x? Right? So it's negative 8. Now I take negative 8, I multiply it to negative 8x. This becomes minus 40. But you change your signs. The, x squared is or the x's cancel. I'm left with a remainder of 20. There's nothing else. So we don't care about this part, but I'm just showing you all the proper math. So you have a slant asymptote at y equals 3x minus 8. Evan, did that go better? OK. Anybody else? OK. So. Let me see what I assigned here. Okay, so this assignment, they don't ask you to graph. They just ask you to find the parts. So just read the directions, do the best you can, and then hopefully we'll put it all together uh, tomorrow. Page 399, we'll do... Now, on the second part, 81 to 87, there's an A and a B. You just have to do A, okay? Just A, right? So there's an A and a B. Just do the A for the second part. Okay. Thanks for listening.